Hello everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to create a YAML pipeline in Azure DevOps and explain the key concepts used in the creation of the pipeline. So there are two types of pipeline which can be created in Azure DevOps. One is YAML pipeline, another one is release pipeline. However, in 2021, Microsoft started calling release pipeline as classic pipeline. And when you create a project now, it's disabled by default. So in this video, we'll focus on YAML pipeline and understand its key concepts. So let's check this in lab. You can access the Azure DevOps using the URL dev.azure.com. And if you are a first time user, when you will click on start free, it will first prompt for the username and password as I have previously logged in. So I'm directly into dev.azure.com lab calendar. But if you are a first time user, first you have to sign it up and then create the new organization. So you will see the page, something like this. Get started with Azure DevOps, continue. You have to provide few details like the name of the organization. In this case, I have used Lab Shalinda and where will you host the projects in? And once you will fill these details, you will go into your organization. Now you can see there are multiple projects in my organization. So let's create a new project. Demo DevOps. Let's copy it again. Let's make it private, create the project. So once you are logged in, you have created an organization and then created the project. Then you will see the different components of the Azure DevOps, like boards, repos, pipeline, test plans, and artifacts. In this video, we'll focus mostly on the pipelines and the repos. So let's go to the pipeline and click on create pipeline. So as soon as you create a pipeline, it will ask you where is your code. So that means where this pipeline will be saved and Git repository your code is lying in. Because once you'll create the pipeline, it will create a YAML file of the pipeline and save that file into the Git repository. So in this video, we are not doing the integration with Bitbucket or GitHub. So I'll just use the Azure repos. If we'll click on Azure repos, there is no repository. The reason is because we haven't created any. So if first let's go to repos, create a new repository. Let's name it as first pipeline. Add a default readme to it and create. Your repo is created. And in this, there is only a readme file and there is nothing else in it. So let's go back to the pipeline. Click on the pipelines create a new pipeline and choose the Azure repos Git, And there you see the Git repository, which you have just created. Let's select the first pipeline. And there are multiple ways you can configure your pipeline. One is starter pipeline, which will just provide you the basics. Others are if there is an existing YAML pipeline file in your repo that you can use, or there are other methods like using .NET, Android, ASP.NET, or the Docker. But in this case, we'll just go with the basic starter pipeline. And the starter pipeline creates a very basic pipeline for us. But instead of using this file, I'll use my own code so that I can explain the key concepts which are used in the pipeline file. So I've copied the content now. So let me explain it step by step. So first is trigger. So trigger tells the pipeline when to run. In this case, it's main, which means, which means if there are any changes in the main branch of the Git repository, this pipeline will be triggered. You can use any other branch also, if you want to trigger the pipeline through that branch, or you, you can just turn it to none, and then this pipeline can only be triggered manually. Then comes the stages. So a pipeline has multiple stages. So in the stages you define what will be happening in this pipeline. So first as I have defined the build stage, then publish artifact stage. However, when you deploy to the multiple environment like test environment, dev environment, and, and your production environment, those are defined in the different stages. In the stage, you define the display name of the stage and what is that stage? And the stage contains multiple jobs and each job runs on one agent. So here, as you can see, there is a build job which is created and in the another stage, there is a published job. And 
under the display name, you can see the pool. So that is the VM image pool. So this is the Azure managed pool where we are using the Ubuntu latest image. However, so you can also define the self hosted agent where you have to create a virtual machine and install the DevOps agent so that the jobs can run using the self managed pool. But in this case, we are keeping it simple and using the Azure managed pool. Next is the steps. Every job has multiple steps and each step consists of the task or the different scripts. Like in this case, there is a script which just echoes it building the project and display name is echo build. In this another task is where it sets up the Python environment where the Python version should be three plus and it should be added to the path. So here the display name is setup Python. Another task is which is running echo command, you name date and the build stage completed. I have just added this script so that I can explain that in the job we have steps where we can run multiple scripts. And same, we are creating an artifact and saving the artifact. And in the task, we are publishing the artifact with the name of the file artifact.txt and the artifact name is sample artifact. In the next stage, what we are doing is the publish artifact. We are downloading it in the next stage and then displaying the contents of the artifact. And this stage depends on the build stage. So that means first the build stage will complete, then the publish artifact stage will run. And in the job, we are defining that we are using the Azure manage pool where we'll be using the Ubuntu latest image. Next is we'll download the artifact, sample artifact, and using the script, we'll just display the contents of the artifact. So in this pipeline, we have used the triggers, we have used the stages, steps, jobs, tasks, scripts, and the artifacts. So mostly these are the key concepts which are used while creating the pipeline. You can be very creative running the scripts, running the different applications, downloading the artifact or creating the artifacts. And in the stages, you can define different environments like production environment and then integrate with Azure or any other environment and then deploy the contents into the different applications like web application or virtual machines or the containers. So let's save and run this pipeline. You can write a custom message test and then commit to the main branch. However, this is not recommended. You should always create a new branch and then create a pull request out of it. But because we are just testing it, this is a demo environment. I'll just commit directly to the main branch, save and run. And as you can see, there are two stages, build stage and publish artifact stage. If you click on the build stage, it is just queued. It should start soon. Okay. The build stage has started now. So first it is initializing the job. It's just checking the hosted agent, which is managed by Microsoft. Then the agent machine name and all the details of the agent. And it creates the folder structure for the Git repository, which we have linked as a source. And all the files will be downloaded into the hosted agent. Then we ran one script content where we are echoing the build project. And it's showing the building the project. Then set up Python. We set up the environment for the Python. As you can see here, we ran the basic commands, you name hyphen a and the date. Then we created the artifact. We just echoed it's creating the artifact. So it's just displaying that and publish artifact. So a artifact file artifact.txt is created and the name provided is sample artifact. And finally the post, it will just uh, remove the cache and delete everything finalize job and it will clean up the task and the orphan process. And if you'll click on the build job, you can see one artifact is produced. So if we'll click on it because we just produced the artifact with the name sample artifact artifact.txt, you can download it. But however, we have already displayed the content of this file in the next stage. So let's go to publish artifact stage. 
same it'll just show the hosted agent which agent machine is being used the versions and all those details and it set up the folder structure in this stage in the hosted agent and then downloads the file from the get as you can see git config it set up the git configuration now in this stage we define that it should download the artifact so the artifact is downloaded and the name of the artifact file is artifact.txt and it should display the content of the artifact hello this is a simple artifact file that is the content and same it will clean up it will remove the cache and clean up everything so this job is completed but if you want to see the artifact which was created let's go and download this file if we'll check the contents of this file hello this is a sample artifact file which you can see in the stage itself hello this is a sample artifact file so that's how you create the pipeline in azure devops now if we'll go back to our repo we can see first pipeline.yml file is here and now as you can see the trigger is main which means if you'll we'll make changes in the git repository this pipeline should be triggered so let's go to readme file and just edit it test commit we are committing to the main branch directly however this is not recommended but let's do it and the change is committed now let's go back to the pipeline and we can see the pipeline has triggered this is the second run we are running and it will run on the stages then it will move to the another stage next stage and the pipeline will run let's wait for this pipeline to finish in timing if you'll click on the associated pipelines which pipeline it's associated to because we updated the readme so the pipeline completed so this is the use of the trigger but now i don't want my pipeline to trigger automatically whenever i make changes so let's go to trigger and set it up as none and commit it now i have committed it but i have set up the trigger as none so the pipeline should not be running now and as you can see the pipeline is not running and we have to now every time we have to run the pipeline we have to run it manually so it depends on your environment if you want to set up a continuous integration continuous deployment like in this case because it's just a build pipeline so it's a continuous integration pipeline so whenever there is a change in the code of the git repository automatically the pipeline should trigger so it can do multiple steps in the build stage you can compile your code you can test your code you can do the testing and you can add a stage of the deployment where you will deploy your code infrastructure into azure or any other environment so this was the basics about azure devops pipeline and i'll create the integration with different environments deployments as well as some advanced level features in azure pipelines in my upcoming videos so that's all for this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much